What's going on everyone, welcome to a new video. Today we're going to have some double exposure effects in Photoshop. So what we're going to do is we're going to first put our photo in Photoshop. After that, go to your selection tool and go select subject. And essentially what this is doing is it's going to select yourself. So either uh, if you have yourself on a clean background like I do, it'll select it pretty well. Or if you go on a more complex background, you can select it, but it'll potentially select other things. So you're going to have to refine your selection. It'll just save you more time to do on a clean background. So after we have it here, Go to this tool over here and it's uh, the rectangle with the circle in the middle. It's a masking tool. So click that and you'll see now we have a decent selection of ourselves. But to be able to see it, use this with the circle with the like half and half into it and go solid color. And I'd suggest if you have a white background, for example, make it white. You can make this any color because we're going to change it after anyway. So after that, put that be underneath. And now you can see if I unselect it and reselect it, we've gotten a pretty decent selection. You can see some of my strands are in there, but who cares? So after that, get an image that you like. So I have this off of uh, Google and what you want to do, select it first and then go control T. And now you can manipulate it however you want. So I'm going to make it bigger, lower the opacity. And what this is going to do is you can kind of see where you want to place it. So let's say, you know what, I'll put it like that, something like that. It looks kind of good there. So bring the opacity back up and go right click, create clipping mask. And you can see we've already gotten a pretty decent selection and how our double exposure effect works, but we're going to refine it later on. So after this, put a mask on top of it and go control J. So what it's going to do, it's going to create its duplicate layer and you're going to move this. So control T on that, the one you just made and bring it down. So just put it over your photo. Um, ideally make it Instagram's dimension. So 1080 by 1080, it'll look way better. And now what you want to do is right click and go flip vertical. So this is going to invert it. So you can see it's on top. And what you're going to want to do after that is go and create another clipping mask on this. So if you do it correctly, it should end up like that. And we just move it around a bit so you can kind of see it's taking shape. But I mean, we have to kind of refine it. So let's make it bigger so it covers everything. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start using our masks. So make sure your uh, your paintbrush is set to black because it'll start erasing things. So you can get rid of these hard edges here. So let's get rid of that. You can see it's becoming much more seamless now. Um, let's get rid of something on our, like the picture on our face so we can start seeing more of us. So start kind of feathering away at it. You know, get rid of some of this so you can see yourself more. Now you can see we're getting what you're going to do after this is take your solid color tool and take the color that you have here. So it'll have, if you double click it, you'll be able to select the background. So select this sky that you have. So ideally if it's one color, you'll get more of a seamless background. So select the color and you can see now our body's gone. So we're already getting really close to um, having kind of like that really cool floating effect and having it a very like um, artistic. So what you're going to do is just do that and then what you're going to do after that is go oops I didn't select it so go to your mask for yourself your cutout and now use the same brush tool with the black selected to start feathering away at stuff that you don't like so I can get rid of some strands here I can get rid of stuff like I'm just kind of randomly going at it because I think it looks pretty good you know get rid of some birds if you don't like stuff like that like you can get rid of a lot of things but you can see it looks really cool um, so we've gotten pretty much our entire, our entire effect. What we're going to do is we're going to go to adjustments and if you want to, you can add this. I prefer leaving it like this because I think it looks cool like this, but you can add this in to make it more cohesive, put a gradient on top. So first refine the gradient. Let's make it something less jarring. Let's go like, um, black and let's go like a light blue. And we've gotten a way better effect now. So play with the opacity. So you can lower it a bit, maybe play with blend modes. So you have like kind of like more of a sun film burn effect. So I've done like linear dodge, for example, and we've gotten a really cool effect here. So one more thing you can add in like text and stuff. So I use this thing called uh, courier. Let's see here. It's a courier. It's more like a typewriter and let's go. Candid vision. So make it even cooler, space it out. A little bit more. Let's make it kind of like movie poster effect. Uh, let's actually space these words out more. And then 
you know, place it down here somewhere. And you kind of have like a movie kind of poster looking effect. So that's the simplest way to do it. And you can do, do a lot more depending on what your photo is, but uh, this is the simplest and easiest way to do it for a portrait. So if you like this video, please comment down below, subscribe so you can be part of the journey and uh, like the video so people can see it. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Bye.